Yo, what's going on, guys? Uh, Jeff Kobe here, and uh, it is a Sunday evening. Making this video at 8:51, and why am I doing it at 8:51 instead of the morning? Well, because I started this morning, but I didn't get to finish the video. So, and I even talked about something completely different halfway through it. But I said, you know what? Let's just talk about something totally different. Um, but anyways, uh, first off, I uh, wanted to thank you guys for following me on this uh, video blog, Confessions of a Real Estate Investor. Uh, um, we had walk. Right, uh, SP Watkins 1970. Thank you so much for the comment, uh, and thank you, Charles, with LA Investors. Uh, appreciate all your feedback and stuff like that, what you're going on and what you're doing. So, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, anyone else that hit that like button, appreciate it. Hope that you left me a comment though, but thank you. Um, but anyways, um, the, today's video, I want to talk about something um, because a lot of times people always ask me, okay, what's your number one strategy when it comes to acquiring new business or acquiring new deals? And I always say this, uh, you know, it, it, most, some people might think that it might, I might say things like, oh yeah, it's buying at the court step. Oh yeah, it's uh, doing organic mail or direct, you know, sending out letters. Oh yeah, it's probate. Oh yeah, it's REOs. Oh yeah, it's short sales. You know, that kind of stuff. But in reality, it's not any of that stuff. It's, it's more of a business philosophy that I kind of coined and uh, put together. And, uh, it's it's a way of doing business, I believe, and that philosophy is called the thank you investor philosophy, and it's pretty powerful stuff. And I'm gonna tell you a story on uh, what happened to me uh, just recently, and kind of tie it in together on um, what this thank you investor philosophy is all about, right? Um, because a few uh, months ago, right, I, I got a lead from uh, my acquisition guy, and it was a particular lead in the city of Compton, of all places. And this particular story, I told it a few times, and I actually even told it on radio over the weekend. So it's very, very interesting. Um, <laughs> because uh, this particular deal, when it came, I was just like, all right, cool, let's go and take, take a look. You know, the numbers weren't that smoking or whatever, you know, but it looked like it might pay some bills, right? So we're just like, okay, let's go out there, and we met our contractor out there at the property. Now, now, when we get up to the door, right, we knock on it, we do our thing like we always do. The guy opens up, and the guy just, it was a weird dude. He was wearing some neon shorts or whatever, and he was just tatted up and wearing a tank top. So he just looks strange to begin with, and in some in some boots, right? <laughs> in some boots, if you can imagine that, right? So in some boots, brown boots, and some neon shorts, and then some tank top, and he was just inked up everywhere. Strangest thing. Um, and then he goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, hey, how's it going? I was like, hey, I'm Jeff. And he's like, oh, okay. Uh and it was like, yeah, I'm here for inspecting the property. He's like, oh, yeah, come on in. And so we go inside, and I start doing my thing like I always do, which is like snap, 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 start taking pictures. And then when I started doing that, the guy just flips his lid. I kid you not. He goes, he goes, what are you doing? You didn't say you were going to be taking pictures. Ooh, you didn't tell me you were going to be taking pictures. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, whoa. I'm like, whoa, well, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, um, I didn't know that taking pictures is going to offend you. And I was just like, and I was just like, uh, I didn't know that I could not take pictures. And, he, and then he gets up, and then he's smart really smart ass with me and he goes he goes no one said that you can't take pictures and he goes he goes he says all you gotta do is ask and I was just like uh can I take pictures to him and then he was like yeah go out in my head and I was just like okay and this by this time I'm just like man I gotta get the fucking in and out you know and then the contractor you could tell on his face he was just wanting to be in and out also you know so we go to this next next uh bedroom which was pitch dark to begin with, right? It was like dark as heck in there. And then the, just that room was just dark, you know? It had a black like curtains covering up the windows or whatever, and lights were all turned off. You know, when sometimes you take a picture, right? And when you pu push down on the camera, right? The flash actually comes out, right? So the flash came out, as you can imagine, right? I'm just there kind of like, well, making sure that that, that guy in the neon short doesn't whack me with like something or something like that, right? And I'm ready to push it out, and the flash comes off. And then right when that happened, woof! Some big lady, like six feet tall or whatever. Like, she probably weighed like a good 250 pounds or something like that. It just comes out and just starts coming, rushing towards me like he's just like a, or like a pissed off rhino or whatever. And, and then suddenly she goes, what are you doing? You can't be taking pictures of me. And then she goes, I'm pregnant. And I'm just like, whoa, 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 take a look, take a look, take a look. You know, oh my God, I don't have any pictures out here. And then I'm just like, okay. And by this time, I'm just like, I'm freaking done. I, 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 I'm done. I was just like, I'm just done with this, you know? 
And um, I'm just like, I- I- I'm freaking dead. And then we got up and, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, we're leaving. And, and, and we just left. And the crazy thing about it is this particular deal came from another investor who claimed to him, claimed to be a rehabber, but he just said, yeah, he just happened to run out of cash on, he was tied up on other deals, so he wanted to just wholesale it to us, right? And that was one of the reasons why we went out, because a lot of wholesalers would bring these deals and so forth. Now, you know, the deal was was funky but then the numbers were still so so you know so so you know i wanted to find out more information so in reality you know i did call the guy and i dug up some more information and what i found out with that particular deal was what it was a short sale deal and when it comes to short sales you know the, the short sale approval letter uh comes out if you don't know what short sale is all about just freaking google it okay you can pull it up instead of me explaining it to you but the point of the matter is this is that on the approval letter, um, they're going to have a specified name of the buyer on there. So if you're wholesaling, where you're trying to sell your contractual rights and stuff like that, um, it's, you can't do that when it comes to short sales. Because if you do that, you're violating not one, the short sale approval letter, right? That actually puts your seller in jeopardy, right? That guy in neon shorts or whatever. And you're going to actually put your team agents in uh, trouble also, right? So I'm explaining this to, to the guy, right? And I'm explaining this to the freaking... Uh, uh, investor himself and the and uh, you know he was just like well it's a simple fix all we do is uh, you know just close it and we'll go ahead and instantaneously do this and do that and do this and he started giving me all kinds of stuff and which I knew that it wasn't gonna work to be it because you know, you're in clear violation because you have to even sign an affidavit or arm's length transaction saying that there is no outside deals other than this, you know within what's uh, what's uh, um, disclosed to the lender, right? Because if you're not disclosing everything to the lender, tech, you are in breach and you are uh, hiding uh, material fact, which is aka considered fraud, right? So, uh, but I told the guy, I said, hey, look, man, you're gonna have difficulty selling this, man, and then um, and then I was just like, oh yeah, and when I found out. One thing from the guy is that he started disappearing now. He wouldn't return my call. He wouldn't return my acquisition guy. So uh, instantaneously, I killed the deal at that moment. Now, earlier in the beginning of this video, I talked about a concept, right? A concept called the thank you investor philosophy, right? And what that thank you investor philosophy and how this story I just told you about a deal I killed and how some rhinoceros, you know, owner or whatever was going to freaking run me over and, uh, you know, the miscommunication between the wholesaler, the seller and myself and all that other stuff that happened um, is this, is that a lot of times investors don't give a shit, like really. They don't give a shit about certain things other than just making this. And I think that's the root problem with a lot of the stuff that happens there, you know? You don't thank, you know, your private investors who's giving you the ability to be able to do your business. You don't thank your debt partners who's, even though, you know, people say, yeah, hard money lenders are ripping me a new one because they're charging me, you know, four points and uh, 13% interest rate, you know? But in reality, if they're giving you the ability to be able to do your business, you should be absolutely thanking them, you know? And uh, um, it, it goes a very, very long way because that means if you're thanking them, right, to thank someone and you genuinely thank someone, that means that you truly care about other other people right and I think that's what and that's what I believe in and that's what our organization believes in and that's where I come up with saying the thank you investors because just give a rat's ass about the people you do business with right don't take advantage of sellers right just because they don't know the value of the property and you try to freaking beat that down as low as possible to try to buy it at 10 cents on a dollar your equity skimming at that time okay you're gonna get in trouble okay um, you know, don't try to freaking, um, you know, inflate values as a wholesaler because you're trying to flip a contract to, a, a, you know, investor like us and you're not disclosing, you know, the other comparables and stuff like that. Don't do that kind of stuff. Just be upfront, be real, right? And, uh, you know, that's what I think it should be all about. And if you can make that switch and you can start immediately applying that in your business, I believe, um, you know, just just being thankful and just being just caring for one another. And then also, um, you know, being there to just serve others prior to what you're going to ask for, you know, because most of the time, most investors I run a class to and those are the folks that are, you know, um, are always constantly like me, 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 which which gets very yeah, 
what I'm saying? It gets sick and tiring. So um, that's what I got, you know, and that's what I believe that it should be into that thank you investor philosophy. So I um, want to get you guys' thoughts on that, you know, um, that's my number one strategy. Um, you know, hope you like this kind of video, and you know, leave me a comment. You know, if you liked it, if you don't like it, you know, just you know, boo or you know, thumbs up or you know, ha, whatever it is. So, uh, leave me a comment. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, answer all the questions, and make sure you follow me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, anywhere else in the social media outlets. So, uh, Jeff Koga on this uh, late Sunday evening, and I will uh, see y'all next week.